Hi everyone, welcome back to a brand new season of the Tita Surgery. Let's go! <laughs> this season, we've got some exciting new guests, we've got some new members, and as usual, we've got some great topics to sink our teeth into, all right? So you've got to keep hitting us up in the comments, in our DMs, let us know how you feel. And you know what? We're helping a lot of people and we're getting a lot of good feedback. So, so today, we have got an amazing guest. We've got Tina, right? Yes. All right. And Tina, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? So my name's Tina. I'm a safeguarding consultant and I kind of fell into it after working in the education, charity, social care sectors. So I've kind of identified examples of good practice as well as examples of not so good practice. And I just Tino, want to share this with the world. That is, <laughs> you, even me, I love what you just said, right? But we've got people that come from different backgrounds. Okay. And the first thing that I want to know mm -hmm. is, I hear this all the time. What is safeguarding? And I know it sounds important because I've been in the teacher surgery and I hear it all the time. I heard the teacher saying it. But what is safeguarding? What does that mean? And why is it so important for you to start a whole organisation for that? So it's the action we take on a day-to-day -day basis to protect and safeguard the children, young people, even vulnerable adults that we work with. So it's about being intentional. So we're thinking about policies and procedures. We're thinking about safer recruitment. We're thinking about whistleblowing, code of conduct so many different elements to it but it's in making sure that we're intentional in safeguarding protecting the children and young people in our care is this i mean forgive my ignorance is this mm -hmm. not something that's already done or is this something that or is it something that needs to be drastically improved is, is there is there a big is there things missing still within safeguarding young people within schools we would like to think that it's happening, but we've seen examples of, you know, bad practice where people are not taking their role seriously and not thinking about the intention of actually putting things in place to safeguard and protect the children in their care. And sometimes it's just mere laziness. It takes work and, you know, some people can't be asked, mm. but it's important that we recognise it's not only protecting someone's life, but potentially could be saving a child's life as mm. well. So with your particular consult, it's a consultancy, right? Yep. Can you tell us what you do? Where do you come in? And what? how do you help enforce like, or recommend safeguarding? So I deliver training, child protection awareness, as well as designated safeguarding lead training. I do training on different spotlights regarding safeguarding. So my expertise is in domestic abuse. I do a lot of work around that. Mm. I do audits. I also um, deliver sessions with parents so that they can understand their role in safeguarding their children as well. Quick question, Tina, right? So you said that your particular expertise is um, domestic abuse, right? Yes. How do you safeguard against that? How do you train someone to safeguard against domestic abuse? Can you give us an example of what kind of consultancy you'll give to, to a school or to a parent or other things like that? So I'm really passionate about prevention. I think yeah. education is so important. And if we're teaching young people about spotting the signs of unhealthy relationship, they can get the help and support immediately rather than waiting for the situation to escalate before mm. we get involved. Um, also just thinking about how we can raise awareness of the different forms of domestic abuse. Mm. When people think about domestic abuse, the first thing that comes to mind is a physical incident. Yeah. And we know it's much more complex than that. Mm. So when we're thinking about young people, coercion and control is one of the most popular forms of abuse that they go through but sometimes they don't recognize it and it can be very subtle so they don't even realize in an abusive yeah. relationship i've had young people say to me okay with well, a guy shows that he's really jealous that really means he really loves me or they will be very subtle and say okay wear the green dress the green dress brings out the color of your eyes where mm. really they don't want you to wear the black dress because mm. it's a bit more attractive so it's about finding ways to kind of educate young people so that they can spot the signs early and they can get their help and support if they see, require see forgive my ignorance because the examples that you gave there was outside of a family setting that was more like a romantic or relationship setting. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, I deep down I know this, but you know when you hear the terms, the, you just come to conclusions, and I'm sure a lot of people do. I'm just thinking of a kid at home or a, a woman, at, a vulnerable woman at home, and it only happens within the family. So are you saying that within domestic abuse, it's just close people that are close relations yep. within that person? So it could be intimate relationships. Um, it could even be a child towards their parent as well. And another key issue that we need to think about is parents who are experiencing domestic abuse at home, it has an impact on the child. Mm. So when they're going into school and we're thinking about, oh, maybe that child's falling asleep in class, and we're telling them off, assuming maybe they're playing PlayStation or 
all night. Maybe there was an incident happening at home. And that's why they couldn't sleep. Mm. Or it could be a case where a child doesn't want to come to school. And we're thinking maybe the child wants to bunk. They don't want to come and achieve anything. But it might be the case where they feel that they have to stay home to be able to protect their parents. So we have to kind of think about what could be the issues impacting children's engagement in education. So what I'm seeing is basically it's a where you will come in is where teachers are human beings, right? And we all need to learn. Exactly. And not just teachers, but people that are um, in, within, that are responsible for um, your children when you go to a school or churches, community centres, whatever the case may be, right? So you're telling me where you come in and um, I'm seeing where you come in is you teach teachers and um, the establishments how to look for examples of domestic abuse or um, that might be within a, a procedure where you're teaching them um, safeguarding procedures like things to look out for mm -hmm. and educating them and having an awareness mm -hmm. so that they're not just for example that's a good example that you gave a child comes in and they're sleepy they're tired it's true uh, as a teacher you think you know you've been playing playstation mm -hmm. and watching you know playing Fortnite all night but exactly these are things to look out for and it can potentially save save a child, right? Exactly. So, so, yeah, starting those conversations can help that child to kind of disclose. Mm. If we're not going to talk about domestic abuse, then maybe the child is not going to be, you know, confident to be able to say, okay, that's what I'm experiencing at mm. home. Can you help me? So it's about starting the conversation so that we can create that safe space. Let me ask you a difficult question then. And mm -hmm. I'm here on the teacher surgery. I'm learning a lot. And I think this is a question that I've learned from being in a teacher surgery. Mm -hmm. Now, the teachers... They're only human, right? Definitely. They are learning a lot of things in this like new age. I'm seeing that it's not just teaching your child A, B, C, D, and then one, two, three, and they go home. Now, is this not additional work on their plate? Is it? Are they able to, or do you think this is just information that should just be standard to them, or do you think um, it's difficult for them to just take in all this new information and things like that? Where Where would you stand on that? I think teachers do remarkable jobs and a lot is on their sh um, shoulders. So I think collectively we need to be able to work together. Mm. And if it's the case like myself coming in, doing sessions, mm. but it's important that they are aware so that they can also kind of recognise the signs and, you know, report to the DSL. So it's not expecting them to do everything, mm. but it can ensure that you are trained, you're informed mm -hmm. so that you can assist and support yeah. that child and young person. And also what I would like to say as well, to your defence, is you're teaching the teachers and also the, the families and exactly. other people around them, which exactly. actually helps to lighten the load. Exactly. You understand, right? Now, I just want to ask you a bit more about yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So you said that you fell into it. You was a teacher yourself? So I used to work as a learned mentor yeah. in pupil referral units. Okay, okay. So you must have seen a lot of, like, safeguarding examples there, I on, can imagine, On right? a day-to-day -day basis. So yeah. you say you fell into it. What does that mean? So... I've always kind of built positive relationships with the young people I've worked with. Mm. So I always going to kind of got, yo, Tina, you're great with the young people, become a DSL. Mm. And so it kind of grew from there. Um, and then I also love training. I also love raising awareness. I just used to, every space I'm in, I educate people mm. about safeguarding. So it just came natural to mm. me. And it was really out of stubbornness. I wanted to go on holiday. My manager said that I can't. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to be self-employed then. <laughs> so, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so I kind of fell into doing yeah. it. Um, I was delivering sessions in schools and then it kind of grew from there so yeah for the last mm. 10 years i've kind of developed well, myself and, and as a so consultant. you've got your own consultancy now yes so what is what is your consultancy called kesis consulting that's an interesting you know the name was that <laughs> i was fumbling with it that's a, <laughs> but, um what what is that from so initially for the last seven years i've been known as tina popia consultancy yeah. i had a daughter and I've always been passionate about young people and, mm. you know, making sure that they grow up in a safe world. But I think having her really pushed my motivation that mm. I want her to grow up in a safer world. So her name is Kaziah. Okay. So Kesis was inspired by her name. Okay. But mm. then my husband was like, oh, well, Kesis stands for keeping everyone safe in society. And mm. I was like, oh, genius. Is so <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised. So, yeah, keeping everyone safe in society. And oh, that's, I love that. Yeah. Kesis, that's, yeah. That's beautiful. And um, so tell us, I want you to, to really boost yourself because I'm <laughs> sitting here and I'm loving what you're saying and it makes sense. So what is it that you mm -hmm. can offer to these schools? Are there any other like safeguarding uh, people out there? And what is it that you particularly do, particularly do that um, will help establishments and schools? 
not only do I bring passion, not only do I bring over 20 years of experience, mm -hmm. but what I think I focus on is thinking about how gender and culture impacts the way in which children and young people experience the world. And I think it's very key as professionals, as teachers, that we recognize that. So my training is interaction, interactive, mm -hmm. it's thought provoking and I make sure that you understand the powerful role that you can play in saving mm. someone's life it's not just about thinking you know this is part of my job mm. you actually can be protecting and saving someone's life oh, cool. so I think even my experience in the domestic abuse sector as mm. well I really enforce that you know you recognize the impact of domestic abuse on children's education and that's something that people don't often discuss I love that and Ooh. finally finally uh, just let the people know where they can find you and you know your social media tag so so Kesis Consulting on Instagram, K-E-S-I-S -S, Consulting. Uh, I also have a website, www.kesisconsulting.com. So check me out. Beautiful. Thank you. Can we get a round of applause for Tina? Thank you.